success in the music business begins with a dream, a vision. This podcast will give you, the listener, the insight and tools to turn that vision into a reality. Meet the industry professionals who work day by day behind the scenes, helping to make those dreams come true. Welcome to the business side of music. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. This is actually our third time. It is. It is. Maybe we'll get it right this time. You're going to put the pressure <laughs> on me early, aren't you? I always enjoy it, too. It, it's great to, to be able to spend the time talking about things that are so important. Yeah. Chuck Thompson is in the studio with us today here in Nashville, Tennessee, Business Side of Music podcast. I have to say, you and I and the industry have been through hell and back in the last year or so. It's amazing we still have an industry at this point. Yeah, yeah, I- exactly. Um, we've lost friends. Mm-hmm. We have lost business. We've lost tours. We've lost shows. Um, but we're still here. We and are, and it continues to happen, unfortunately. I, I've seen tours that were even set for spring that are now being rolled back again. Yeah, it's, yeah. And that's a whole nother show. Mm-hmm. But today we're going to talk about something that is very near and dear to your heart. It is. You've been doing this for quite a while. Longer than I'd like to admit. Yeah. <laughs> Management. Management 101. Um, it's, it's interesting when we talk about managers, because there's different managers for the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we'll touch on those a little bit. When I first started, you didn't have these really kind of uh, customized, individualized, you know, specialty managers. You had one guy who wore about four or five different hats and, and took care of things. But it, the business is, have, has obviously grown and expanded, and, and so we have to adjust with the times. And, and as we become a little more specialized, we also have to be a little more generalized because... We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring and what direction this this career, this industry is going to go in. So, let's just start right off. Are you ready for a manager? I am John Doe. I've written some songs. I've actually recorded them uh, in the kitchen of my house, and I've got fifty fans. And I think I'm really cool. Am I ready for a manager? That's an open-ended question. Okay. And let me give you sort of an open-ended answer because you're, you're right. I got emails every week, uh, people wanting to introduce me to their music. And if the conversation continues, that's, that's the direction that they go. They want a manager. The first question that I ask back to them is, like I said, an open-ended question. What do you have to manage? Management is is a specific need at a specific time for a specific function, and not a lot of people really understand that. And to address something you said a moment ago, uh, additionally, there are really two types of managers in the music industry that get confused sometimes. And, and they wear really two different hats, and sometimes the... The, the streams will pass, they'll cross, but for the most part, it's two separate entities. It is, it is. Although both depend on each other, both for the information that they use to make their decisions, as well as how to implement those decisions. So the two manager fields, I guess we can call it that, uh, is the, the artist manager mm-hmm. and the career manager. What's, what's the difference? I, the easiest or maybe way maybe I should say is one a business manager and another is an artist manager and, and that's it I, I actually like to break it down in, in, in two, two different terms an artist manager and a business manager that seems to be a little easier to separate uh, the business manager I mean our business has gotten so complex that with the people that need to be paid and all the different uh Tax laws. I mean, I, you, I'm sure that everyone has heard the, the incredible stories of of artists who suddenly realize that they own millions in taxes. A business manager is an is a very important part in that. They can help guide you through this maze of legalese and accounting 
to help you maximize your money and keep you out of trouble. Additionally, because the the world of business management has developed so many years in so in so many years, it also gives you a bit of a buying power situation. If your manage if your business manager has ten artists and you need a bus, if he's leasing buses already for six of those other artists, he knows where to go for a deal. He knows what a good deal should be and. If you're his seventh client looking for a bus, likely he can get you a good deal. So that's an entire realm of the financial world that a business manager can really help you navigate. But let's back up to where we started with my first question. At what point does that artist or that act need a manager and which one do they need first? Wow. Okay. Hey, you thought I was going to play softball today? It ain't going to happen. Okay, good. Well, I I am a personal manager. My contract requires someone that I take on to manage to have a business manager that I choose in coordination with them. So that to me, I guess, is an easy answer. I think you need an artist manager f- first to help you start to navigate that down that road to, to making money. When that money starts to come your way, then you need a business manager to help you navigate the world of dealing with that money. Now, would a business manager be the same thing as, say, an accountant, a CPA, something like that? Or is it something entirely different not entirely different a a lot of artists that i work with start with an account or cpa because their needs are not that great at that time a business manager is a step up to that Uh, that's sort of a cpa on steroids uh, for lack of a better way to put it for instance I, i work with an artist who works heavily both in the united states and in canada when she first came to me she had a really complex financial setup we worked. We hired a new business manager. We worked with that business manager to simplify her setup. Uh, we made her less apt to be audited and saved her probably about $20,000 a year in fees just by working with that business manager to get him to simplify her business processes. So without digging into that particular artist's career, is there a reason it gets to that point? It, Is that bad management? Is that the artist not taking and not paying enough attention to their career or a combination of many things? Because and the reason I I preface that by saying because I know a couple artists, some of them hugely successful that I have worked with over the years who have developed a, a couple financial situations that got them in trouble with the IRS. Mm -hmm. And and you're talking six figures, seven figures that all of a sudden you owe those boys and they don't play nice. No. So you need to catch that ahead of the game, right? Yeah, and and there's no... I've heard all those stories too and I've actually been close to some of those stories. There's no way, uh, or there's no 100% guarantee, I should say, that that may not happen to you. This particular artist... Over the years, uh, financial situations change, laws change, especially when you're dealing with international finance. This person did not keep up with those changes in laws as well as maybe her people should have. Right. It never got to the crisis point. Fortunately, it just got a little bumpy. And when we started to tear it apart and look at it, we realized with the help of the business manager that there were ways to streamline it. And that's something that when you very, very first start your career, I guess that's a great way to say it. When you first start your career, you really should be on top of that from the very beginning. Absolutely. Whether you're making $50 or you're making $50,000, because it will sneak up on you pretty quick. Yeah. Well, not only that, and, and it, it, from the very beginning of your career, you need to treat this as as a business, just like any other business. That's surprise, why we call it surprise. the music business. Yeah, exactly. And I think 
a lot of people don't realize, well, they're creatives. And we talk about that a lot on the show. They're creative people. They're not analytical. They're not business minded. And that's why you need to have that manager. Right. Okay. So with a couple things, you have those songs and you have those recordings and you're, you think as the artist, John Doe is that's good enough to present. Do you at that point coming in as their manager, is that where you have to maybe give them some tough love and say, this ain't good enough or this needs to be better or let's, let's go ahead and take this and, and shop a deal. What's, what's that process? It is. I mean, you, good music is a very subjective term. And I don't think anybody can answer that que- that question. As a manager, I look to see, are the songs within your genre comp- competitive? Are they like the other songs that are out there? Are your recordings either so unique or so competitive that they're compelling and, and people want to hear them? Are the recordings that you've made recently better than the recordings before? It has to be that kind of process. And you're right. It, it is a tough love situation. This may not be ready to take to someone. It may not be ready for you to start spending time out on the stage with it. But that is part of the process. And, and when I first take, start working with an artist, one of the things I do is to try to tear apart everything they've got to see where these improvements could be made to help them get that leg up. And that is really the manager's role at that point because you're you're advising them you're consulting them and you're really trying to help point them in the right direction correct and and it's not a it's not a uh, something that should be taken as a as an insult it's just another creative opinion because at the end of the day if you as the manager who believes in this act doesn't think it's good enough to take somewhere then it's, it's really basically not good enough to take somewhere. It's not. And, and it's based on our relationships as well. If I've built a relationship over the years with this A&R person or this head of a record label, then I can't damage my relationship by taking them something that I don't feel is right. And we're going to talk about that in a little while, and that is relationships and building your network within the industry. But I uh, let's let's kind of go back to question number two here which is do you create do you create your career like a business and that's part of your job as the manager to make them understand that this isn't all just getting on stage and rocking out and and having a good time that this this is a business i Mm -hmm. i worked with an artist several years ago who completely understood that fundamental and and i may have shared this story on the show before He would always ask me two questions at the end of the night. Number one, did you get the bottle of wine? And number two, did you get the check? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it wasn't in that order. But he always wanted to make sure we got paid, you know, before we left the venue. And that was his mindset. As as long as he knew the money was coming in and everything was good, he was fine. But boy, if there was a problem or there was a mix-up or we had a slow-paying, you know, buyer that night uh a a promoter that night you know there's a lot of explaining that had to go on so it it is going into this you as the artist need to have that business mindset and is that something you help educate in the process oh we have to yes absolutely every artist that i work with wants to be involved to a different degree in the business of their career Some don't want to know anything. Some want to know everything. But an artist that I work with, I I want them to have enough of an understanding about this business so that they know that if we do something, it's being done right. They need that confidence. And then they need also to understand, as you've just said, this is a business and you have to structure your career like a business, not only for your financial success, but so that people start to take you seriously. Because there's a lot of flakes in this business. There is. Yeah. There is. In the studio with us today, Chuck Thompson. When you have a cord scent at your fingertips, the possibilities are endless. Be it digital, analog, analog modeling, altered FM, wave sequencing, or the multi-engine synth. Core gives you easy access to a variety of features to help you get the perfect sounds quickly. 
Whether you're a professional musician or just starting out, Korg truly has a synthesizer to help you express yourself. Visit Korg.com or your favorite Korg dealer to get your hands on one of their products to create new music always. Korg, the official sponsor of the business side of music. Back in the studio, Chuck Thompson is with us today. Third time's a charm. We're having a lot of fun. Maybe we'll get it right this time. Maybe. Well, you know, the last two times we've done this, it was, uh, I think it was with Sarah Fleshner out of, out of Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get to that point of having a serious conversation with mm -hmm. the artist, one of the questions we hear a lot about, and we had a guest on the show yesterday in the studio that, we talked about fan engagement. We talked about that whole social marketing needs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what works, what goes into play, you know, is it TikTok over Instagram, over Facebook? And, you know, we kind of realized in that conversation that they're all different components, but they all uh, they all fit well together. So as the manager, do you look at someone before you sign them? Uh, is it is it impactful if they've got some good fan and social engagement numbers or is that something you can help them develop? I mean, we can always add more to the mix. Right. I, I, it, it, when I consider taking an artist on to manage, we look at everything. We look at social media. We look at their records. We look at everything that that artist has to find out if we can, if we A, have the basis there and B, if we can put together a program that's going to build on what they already have. Specifically with social media, to me it's the most important that that artist is actively pursuing that part because that is such an important part of their career and that they understand the difference between raw numbers and actual social engagement with their fan base. Because you could have 50,000 fans, but if 100 of them are, uh, you know, responding it's not a lot of engaging going right. on there whose job is that to build those numbers is that the manager's job is it the artist's job or is it both it's a team job i find that the most successful social media campaigns are the ones that the artist is the seed they are the person who is the active engager the manager and in some cases people that the manager might bring on to assist are the people that help to put together the, the game plan that can create that direction that might see how this could be done better. But it all boils down to that artist's ability to reach out there and engage with their fans. And I think another conversation we had uh, on one of the shows was taking those potential fans and, and i think the guests called them suspects you know because they're very they're very suspect of where your career is at that point right am i going to devote that kind of time that type of energy that that devotion to that particular artist to really get involved mm -hmm. is that something that once again is that what the team does together is is to help create that involvement to where those fans will engage because ultimately that's what it comes down to is those numbers of the fans that are being responsive and not just a click not just a like Absolutely. It is a team. It, it, this is a team sport. You you build your team around you for the, the needs that you have, just like a corporation will go out and hire four guys to work in their warehouse. You have to d figure out what it is that you need on your team to make uh, make those goals that you've set for yourself happen. And then who on your team is going to take care of uh, helping you set that up? Is that a... Ultimately, would that fall into the realm of some person who specializes in social marketing and, and promotion? Uh, is that somebody that gets brought on to the team eventually? or? In my opinion, yes, uh, simply because it is such an evolving world. It's really very much like the conversation we were having about a business manager. As things start to get very complex, and social media is a very complex world to navigate, an artist is going to be pulled in so many directions that having someone on their team to help them tear apart their social media 
and make suggestions to that is is a very important part now what when you bring that on when it goes out of house to do that that's that timeline that i think the manager helps you pull together because if you do it too soon you're wasting your money if you do too late then there's a lag time and a lot of these people that do this they're not cheap no so you don't want to waste your money and it's like anything else as well just because they say that they're a social media manager do they really have the ability to, to make that impact? Yeah, for do you? they have the chops? Yeah. Yeah. So that leads us into relationships mm-hmm. and building those relationships in your in your network within this industry because relationships are everything. And, you know, we make friends, we make enemies, we have people that we work with, we have people that we may never work with again. But it's all about those relationships and and so how does the artist how does the artist come in and start building relationships especially if they don't necessarily know nobody with they they don't seem to know people within the industry well I, I think that starts at the at the ground level if you're out and playing gigs are you making relationships with the club owners are you making relationships with the production guy I mean it, it starts at that lowest level because the production guy who's Mixing sound at a 150-seat club today could be at the 5,000-seat amphitheater tomorrow. And even if he's not, if you come in there and you make a good impression on him and you handle yourself well and your band is, is great to work with, that word is going to get out. So you're going to, as an artist, going to want to make relationships everywhere you go and show these people that you're serious about this business. And make good relationships. And make good relationships. Yeah. I know one of the conversations that Tom and I have with people is get business cards. Mm-hmm. because and, and, and at the very least, an artist of yours should have your business card to hand out if they don't have their own. But collect names, collect business mm-hmm. cards, collect email addresses, because that's a powerful tool when you get down the road and, and you're starting to build up some steam in your career. Even that seems to be evolving a, a little bit. I just went through Aiba here in Nashville, and I met a young artist who didn't have a business card, but he had built a QR code on his phone. Okay. Everybody's got their phone now. Right. I'm old school. I, I'm with you. I, I have business cards. But he, when I asked uh, for his business card, he brought out his phone, put his QR code up against my phone, and boom, I had all of his information. I remembered that because it was a unique process, and it showed me that this young man was thinking about the future. And I, I guess we could say that QR code is a business card of, of some sense. I, I know that Tom and I worked the NAM show, mm-hmm. and it, people would come by our booth, and without hesitation, we'll give them a business card, and right. we'll always ask for one in return. And we've had a few of those people come up with QR codes. And it's great. I'm like you, though. I'm so old school. It's like, all right, give me a second. I know I've got the app on my phone somewhere. But a lot of them, we would say, got a business card? No. Nope. And they'll give you an excuse. I either just ran out with one or I forgot to bring them. Or, and I'm thinking, you know, if you want to build relationships, there, there might be a vendor in the NAM show, a music merchant, that might be interested in what you're doing mm-hmm. in, in your career and your music. You may want to talk to you about an endorsement deal or something along those lines. And if you don't have a way to communicate with them, they're going to forget you. That's right. Because there's a hundred out there that do. And that's a perfect example of the conversation we're having now about handling your business in a business-like manner. If you, if somebody wants to know something about you and you're not prepared, whether it's a standard business card or a QR code, then you haven't thought through enough about your business to be prepared to go to that next step. And is that the manager's job to help them understand and set that up? I mean, is the manager, is it, could you become a babysitter without realizing it? Or do you stop that before it gets to that point? You would think that maybe the artist would be using their head and have some common sense. Or do you have to tell them these things? Every situation is different. Uh, and I think I've said it in, in this conversation. The first thing that I do when I start to, to consider working with an artist is tear everything they've got apart. What is it they have? 
they may be deficient in one sort of area, but this over here is so well pre prepared that I can work with it. You never, as a manager, no, want to be a babysitter. Because that's the road manager's that's, job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the road manager or the tour manager's job. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. But it's hard to say that just because you don't have an artist doesn't have this piece that they're not ready for management. To me, it's it's an overall view of what they do have. And then, yes, as the manager, it is your responsibility to go, well, you're missing this piece and this is how we fix that. And once again, if you go to like an event like the NAMM show or IEBA or the CMAs or anything like that, you need to be ready to go in and be prepared because, mm -hmm. once again, it's a business. In the studio with us, Chuck Thompson. Hi, everyone. I'm Larry Butler, and I want to send you a free digital copy of my new book, The Singer-Songwriter Rulebook, 101 Ways to Help You Improve Your Chances of Success. That's right. Everything you need to know to launch your career as a singer-songwriter, all based on my 40 years in the live performance arena. And believe me, I've seen it all. In my book, you'll find the 10 things you have to deal with before even thinking about becoming a singer-songwriter-performer. You'll also learn about the five things every singer-songwriter can do this weekend to make their live show better. Five things I can guarantee that you are not doing already. Plus, there's tips on songwriting and staging, photo and video shoots, publishing, merch, dozens of other topics, all written for people who don't particularly like to read. And again, it's free. Just go to the Business Side of Music website homepage and look for my book cover. Click on it, and a free digital copy of my book will be yours. I'm Larry Butler, and I approve of this message. Thanks. A question that I find interesting. You you had sent me an email and, and kind of some talking points of let's let's go over these things. And one of them was, what are your sales figures and revenue? Okay. And that's a great question. But what if you're that new artist that's playing those 150 seat clubs and don't have a lot of a lot of you don't have a large revenue stream? Is, is that a scary situation for you as a manager, or is that something that you take a look at and, and it's just part of the process? Well, you take a look at it and it's part of the process. I, I mean, it, it, it's important, I think, for people to understand that a manager is a professional advisor, and I think the key word there is professional. And um, although there are certain functions that may cost. Uh, for instance, we do project management and there is a fee for that. A personal manager works on a percentage. So they make money when you make money. It's not for me, and I can only speak for myself because every manager has different criteria. If I'm seeing an artist that I become passionate about who's not yet making that much money, but I think that if I work with this artist, we can catapult them into that, the exact amount of money that they're making is not as important as how they're making their money, how they're taking care of their money, and how they're using that money to develop their career. Wow. That's, that's an interesting dynamic that I think a lot of, a lot of artists don't think about. Mm -hmm. And it jumps back to this is a business. It is. It is. What about the artist that the willingness of them to follow your advice, your direction, because we talked about teamwork. It's, mm -hmm. it's you and the client. Are they willing to listen to you? I mean, is that something you clarify in the very beginning with them? Absolutely. And, and of all the things that we've talked about and maybe things that we'll continue to talk about, for me, uh, for my business model, that's the most important. I am not, my artist and I are not going to always agree. We... Oftentimes, we'll, we'll have completely opposite opinions on things. But if that artist is not willing to at least listen to the years of experience that I bring to the table and consider it, then there's really no reason for us to work together. Let's talk about managers for a minute, because as you said, you have years of experience. A new young artist manager that wants to get into the business. Is this a good time to do it? I mean, when you and I started this this game <laughs> that we play, mm -hmm. um, it, it was a lot different than it is now. And so, so you, like you said, we got QR codes and we have all these different levels of opportunity and dynamics, but it's different. Can a, can a young 
independent artist manager wannabe come in and make an impact or on their own or should they be under the umbrella of another manager and in turn learn the ropes you know find out what the good versus bad is in this business is, is that something that a, a, a young person who wants to be a manager should they look at that in my opinion to jump straight into this business as an artist manager with no experience is a death sentence not only for your career but you will probably damage some of these artists and that's that's not a bad thing it's just this is an artist of uh, excuse me it is a business of relationships and there is a lot of learning that you can't get anywhere but on the job i graduated from belmont college but I learned more in my first year as an intern in this business than in four years at Belmont College. And Belmont's got a great program, still does. But there's just so much that you can learn by being on the ground. And I didn't start in management. I started in public relations. That's right. You did. I did. A totally different world. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a good hat to wear. It's a good hat to put on because you can use a lot of those those skills, those mm -hmm. job skills in, in management. Yeah. And it allowed me to start to make those connections that once I was moving into management that, that served me well. So yes, I, I would recommend that someone who wanted to get into management work with someone else. And it doesn't necessarily have to be another manager just to get their feet wet. So let's, let me ask you this question. The the music industry today as we know it, mm -hmm. the record deal, is it important for an artist to have a record deal or can they make it on their own as an independent artist and have a nice career? And I guess maybe I should say, and is there a one record deal better than another? Because we hear about the 360s and the 180s and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the old school full blown here, sign here and I'll make you a star. I don't think the sign here and make you a star exists anymore. Okay. Yes, an artist can have a good career without a record deal. I'll speak for the genre of, of country, which I spend most of my time in. In my, uh, in my experience right now, where we are, the difference that a record deal makes is in the exposure at country radio. Uh, without a major record deal, you're not going to get the exposure at country radio that could catapult you from a 5,000-seat amphitheater to 50,000-seat stadiums. Yeah, I think the reality is we're just, we've never seen it. I don't think anybody's broken that that ceiling yet. No. As, even if you hire... Even if you hire one of the best independent radio promotions teams, and we had this conversation on the show we did yesterday, that the independent artists can still have some success, mm -hmm. but that radio promotions team's probably still not going to be as good as that label team that's been there for years. Well, it, it sort of goes hand in hand with something you said earlier about fans. Radio people have to decide who their long-term investment is going to be. And unfortunately, if RCA Records is going to bring them six artists this year, that's a better investment of their time and, and their resources than an independent artist who's just promoting himself. It, it, it doesn't mean that one piece of music is better or worse. It is just the realities of the investment of time by radio. And it's it's part of that, and I hate to use this word, but it, it is. It's part of that game because you're right. If a label can bring five or six artists and, you know, you're doing the brown bag lunches and the the fan events mm -hmm. and use the independent artists, I know that the radio station, the programmer, the music director, one of their biggest concerns is the label will be around a year or two or five from now. Right. And there's a very good likelihood that most of those artists will be too. Not all, but most. And independent artists, you don't know if they're going to be around tomorrow. No. Because they don't have the deep pockets for the most part. Uh, we were talking about, you know, a radio promotions campaign can be 500000 600000 or more. Easily. To, you know, to just to break a song. Mm-hmm. 
So what does the ind- what does the independent artist do with that manager then? I mean, is is there still something to work with that team, the manager and the artist, the independent artist? Yes. I don't think that every project is destined to be a major label project. Um, and, and if you understand the reality of where that line is drawn, there's still a lot of work to be done, both by the artist and the manager and their teams. I think that a good manager is always looking to jump that line, but he knows how to he knows how to make the best of, of, of being below the line. The way I phrase it to a lot of artists is put yourself in a position that if the major label deal never comes, you're going to have a career that you are proud of, that you can support your family, and that you can carry on past the days that you want to beat yourself up on the road. Conversely, if you do that and the record label deal does come, then you're not just going to have to take what they want to hand you. You're in a position to actually be in somewhat, as much as you can be there, control of the deal. In, in the captain's chair, so right. to speak, yeah. And I think we notice that at such events like Americana Fest, which is here in Nashville every year. There's a lot of really well-established independent artists, and it's not country music. It's mm-hmm. it's rock or it's folk or it's bluegrass or it's, it's kind of that indie garage. But they're all out there making some money and, and doing things, and, you know, they have a career. Yes. So it's possible. Chuck, thanks for being on the show. Enjoyed it as always, sir.